Uh, World War I had an immense effect on, on Planck. It, for one, uh, professionally, it, it drove him away from uh, a direct involvement with politics. Um, he lost, in the span of uh, 1914 to 1919, he, uh, his eldest son was killed in Verdun as a German soldier. He lost his two twin daughters. Um, each of them died in childbirth. And his uh, youngest son, and arguably his favorite child, was injured in World War I and held as a prisoner of war um, for several years. Um, so uh, by the end of 1919, he was, he was incredibly... Uh, devastated as a human being, and he rallied back with his characteristic optimism. He moved away from his physics work after uh, World War I, largely. He started writing essays and speaking philosophically, doing more uh, public outreach and actually fundraising for German science, which was in big trouble. Um, in World War II, then, when the Nazis came to power, uh, when the Nazis came to power long before World War II, um, but they started ushering him out of his last positions of scientific leadership, and um, he wasn't scientifically active or, or that active during World War II at all. He's just trying to survive. Um, but his son, his, his last remaining son by his first wife, Erwin, who had been injured in World War I, was eventually captured by the Gestapo, um, uh, interrogated and tortured, and finally executed in the closing months of World War II for um, an alleged association uh, in the German resistance. He actually did know people in the German resistance. After Erwin was uh, arrested by the Gestapo and accused of treason, um, Planck started negotiating the Nazi bureaucracy as best he could, and uh, his son Erwin's wife, Nellie, as well. They're writing letters. Um, and he, he did write a letter directly to Hitler and uh, this is where we start the, the book in, in chapter one, actually. So Planck says, if basically, in essence, if I'm the national treasure, you say I am, have mercy on an old man and, and spare my son. He said, it's all that's left of me and my best friend. 